take it for granted that we can surf the net, write documents or play music all on one laptop. But Pilot Ace, Automatic Computing Engine, was the first computer that could do more than one thing. It was built by the National Physical Laboratory in the early 1950s. The design for ACE embodied the original ideas of the mathematician Alan Turing. I studied recently something about weather prediction and, and that began in the early part of the 20th century. And they had rooms full of people mm -hmm. doing a calculation, passing the answers on to the people next to them and iterating through space and time that way. And it took them several days to compute what the weather was going to do over the next few minutes. And they got the answer spectacularly wrong. So they must have dreamed of having something like a, a computing engine that you could electronically tell how to do the next step. Well, it's a really, really important machine because it incorporates Turing's designs. He's the father of modern day computing. And it's the only machine that we have that actually incorporates the designs that he created for computing. What are the key features then that Turing was bringing to computing that hadn't been there in the hand-cranked calculating machines, for example? Well, this machine, it's a general purpose computer. So Turing had created some initial ideas in 1936, mathematical concepts really, where he'd written a paper called On Computable Numbers to really explore whether you could create a machine that could do a whole range of different tasks. And he then went to Bletchley Park during the war and he worked on the Colossus code-breaking computer. And he came to the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington in London just after the war. And in 1946, he wrote the actual designs for the ACE computer. Um, these weren't actually implemented until the pilot ACE machine in the 1950s. And was this blue sky work that he was doing? Had somebody asked him to do it? Or was he a, a driven individual um, in this direction? He was a genius mathematician. It was really you know, work that he was doing at Cambridge to explore what was possible with numbers and what was possible with logic. Um, and he was pushing it to the boundaries. But it wasn't really until after the war that people became confident about building, actually building these machines, not just thinking about them in conceptual terms, in mathematical terms, but actually putting them together using valves and delay lines and you know, actually using electrical components to build them. What was driving Turing in that direction? Did he have particular problems that he wanted to solve? It's the same ideas that you get with Charles Babbage back, back in the Victorian times. It's really how do you create a machine that will do human thinking? Um, and that's you know, a very fundamental and, and complicated idea to get your head around, actually. So with Babbage, it was by building a mechanical um, machine that you could turn the handle on and it would crunch the numbers. With Turing, he's thinking about how can we actually do it, not through hard wiring, but through software, through, you know, through mathematics and so programming. This is the beginning of software. Absolutely. Software it was the beginning of, here. beginning of programming, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Uh, so he, he didn't have to choose a language. He had to write the language in the first place. Absolutely, yeah. And then think about how you would actually apply that in terms of components. Well, for its time, you know, many people thought it was actually going to be impossible to build the ACE computer. And then um, once that had been built, people realised, oh, this is actually incredibly useful. You know, we could use this for a whole range of different functions, for working out the stresses on aircraft wings, uh, for ballistic trajectories of, of missiles. It was also used for X-ray crystallography, you know, now for that's, studying now that's, the structure of crystals and, and molecules. So, you know, do some basic good science. things as well as bad. I think computing generally has changed the world because it began that, that idea of a, this kind of computing, a, a software programmable tool that can be added on to anything that you can interface it with. I mean, really, computers have transformed every single part of our lives, haven't they? Everything that you do from using a washing machine that actually contains a computer, turning on your car, you know, things that you don't think of even as computers are containing some kind of computing element within them these days. So it's not just the desktop machine that you use at work or the mobile phone, it's actually, you know, in every part of our lives. And the thread of connection is not in the hardware because the hardware keeps changing. The thread of connection is what pilots say Pilot Ace introduced this notion of software, this, this notion of a sort of meta level, something above the whole, which is greater than the whole. It's almost like the soul, you know, being more special than the human body. It's, mm. it's operating at a, at a higher level and it persists even when the hardware changes. 
I think we tend to kind of think of science as something different to creativity, whereas in fact for me they're very closely linked and you can really see that in the way the machine's been put together, the way it's been soldered, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful object to actually physically look at. But also it's that leading on to software and the implications for what that means now, you know, the fact that we're getting machines not only that have graphical user interfaces but now are just purely touch screen machines that you're being able to just touch something and not have to learn to use it but it's intuitive. But as a, as a vision, once we, we step outside the constraints of the hardware that we have now, we get to step away from that, let the imagination run free. I think we've great distances to travel mm. in this area. What we do with the information when we've got it, whether or not it makes life any better, whether or not it makes life any more survivable, is another question. But uh, I think the, the possibilities are so exciting that if I were starting again now, I, I'd, I'd definitely be going into that area. If, if I'd been there with Turing, standing beside him, looking at the valves, feeling the heat of the valves, I'd have loved that excitement. But gosh, it's more exciting now, much, much more exciting. <laughs>